Hello and welcome to our solution to problem 16 from my spring 2020 final exam. Here uh, we're given a differential equation, second order differential equation, and we're asked to use Fourier series to solve it. Now, of course, when we're using Fourier series to solve these differential equations, what we're really going to get is a particular solution, not a general family of solutions. Um, now, also it's going to be important that we know a Fourier series for 2x and thankfully we were provided for one. Now it's not as nice as the previous problem where we treat it as a 2 pi periodic function which makes the formulas a little bit simpler. Uh, instead uh, we've been given it as a 2 periodic function so that means the period is 2 uh, on the interval negative 1 to 1. And so we're going to assume that our y also has a Fourier series which is 2 periodic on the interval negative 1 to 1. So uh, let's start by, by writing that down. So we're going to assume that y has a Fourier series. Now normally, in fact let's write it out in full what it would be and then we're going to get rid of some pieces. So there'd be a constant term which we usually call a naught over 2 and then we're going to have a sum and we're going to get both the cosine and the sine term. So we have a n times the cosine of, well again normally, uh, we'll do this on the side here, you would have cosine of n pi x over l where l is the half period. All right, meaning half of whatever the period is. In our case the period is 2. So the period is 2, so that tells us that our half period is 1. So we're dividing by 1. So we'll just get n pi x. And then we also will have our bn's times the sine of n pi x. So that's what we would normally assume. However, we know that the Fourier series for 2x does not have a constant term, and it also is just a Fourier sine series, there's no cosine terms. Now that by itself is not enough to conclude that our y is of that same form. However, the form of the differential equation does tell us that. So first, the only way we're going to get a constant is by looking at this 3y term, because if y has a constant and we take derivatives, in fact two derivatives, those constants will go away. So whatever the constant term of y is, then 3 times it will be the constant term for this left-hand side. However, for 2x, there is no constant term. And so we can assume that the a0 is 0. So we assume a0 equals 0. Okay, what about the rest of this? Well, if I start with uh, the sine part of the, the series, and I take two derivatives, I'm going to end up with a negative sine, and the bn's will, will stick around, and I get some other junk, but essentially I'll have constants times the sine. If I start with the cosines, and I take two derivatives, I'm again going to get cosines. Yeah, there'll be a negative, there'll be more constants, more junk, but it's still constants times cosine. And at the end of the day, I don't get any cosines on the right-hand side. And so I know that all of these coefficients on the, on the left-hand side for cosines are going to have to be zero. So I'm actually also going to assume that there's none of those. Okay, So we're going to, we may assume, or we do assume, that a n in fact equals zero for n at least one. So we're actually just going to assume our y is a, has a Fourier sine series. Okay, so what does this mean? Uh, well, this means that we can now equate the right-hand side, this 2x Fourier sine series. So n equals 1 to infinity, negative uh, 1 to the n plus 1 times 4 over n pi times sine of n pi x. We'll equate this with y double prime plus 3y, which now, okay, let's take two derivatives. And again, you just ignore this first piece, the second piece, and we only really have this, this third piece. So when I take two derivatives, I'm going to get a sum. n goes from 1 to infinity. All right, two derivatives. First, uh, I'm going to get 2n pi's. So that'll be n 
squared pi squared. I'm also going to get a negative because two derivatives of sine will be negative sine. And then I still have the bn. Okay, and then of course there's also the sine of n pi x. Um, fine, let's copy that, yeah, sine of n pi x. So this is my y double prime. And then I can add three copies of y. Okay, well that's pretty easy. We get a sum, one to infinity, and then three copies of y, so that'll be three bn's, and then sine of n pi x. All right, let's put these together. All right, it's great. We have n pi x, n pi x, that's fine. They're all signs. Uh, we're going from one to infinity, nothing changed. So it's fine to put these together. And let's see, there's bn's in both. How many? Three minus n squared pi squared bn's times the sine of n pi x. All right, so I now have a, a Fourier series on the left, a Fourier series on the right. They're both all written in terms of sine, and so the coefficients are going to have to be equal. So this implies that, well, okay, these coefficients are equal, and of course, what all I care about are the bn's. So the bn has to equal this coefficient on the left divided by this 3 minus n squared pi squared on the right. So bn will be the alternator times 4 over n pi times 3 minus n squared pi squared. And from that we can conclude that y is equal to the sum from 1 to infinity of the alternator times 4 over n pi 3 minus n squared pi squared sine of n pi x. Um, now it may be that you're skeptical uh, because, man, there's a lot of places one can make a mistake here. So one way you can check, this is always a very nice thing that you, you know you can do, right? So you can check this, right, by just putting it back into the original differential equation. So by computing y double prime plus 3y, right, and now we have an expression for y. So you can compute that, that second derivative of y and add 3 times y to it. Um, and comparing with the Fourier series for 2x, the one we started with. Right? And they should be the same thing. Right? If they're not, okay, you know you made a mistake. If they're the same, you should feel pretty confident. All right. Take care. We'll see you next time.